Thank you for joining WSUCougars.com. We're on the floor of Beasley Coliseum with women's basketball head coach June Doherty. And June, it's late October, and Beasley's quiet now, but in less than a month, it's going to be rocking with basketball. Oh, it's so exciting. Basketball season is finally here. It's been a long <laughs> summer, but it's been a great summer, and our players have worked really hard. They were here in summer school uh, doing great in the classroom and really working hard on their skill sets and getting stronger, quicker, faster. Uh, couldn't be more pleased with the return of the upperclassmen. Entering your fourth season. Oh. Hard to believe, all right, four seasons, huh? You're on track. Yeah, it building is. Program. I know, going into season four, <laughs> it, um, you know, it, it's so different than the first three years just because of the simple fact that we finally have some veterans in the program mm -hmm. who understand the system that we're trying to incorporate both offensively and defensively. And there's just great leadership and accountability going on because of this uh, upperclassmen. And we finally have some depth in the program. Uh, I think we're three deep, at least three deep at every position. And every one of those players have a lot of talent, a lot to offer this, this program. So um, practices are really fun right now for yeah. the coaching staff. What's the benefit of depth? That give you a lot of versatility on what well, you want to yeah, do? Yeah, it does. You know, I mean, the Pac-10 is such a great conference uh, competition-wise, and everybody's so big and strong, and it's a very physical conference, which most of the country plays this way. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it really allows us to, to put players out here and let them perform at a higher level. And, and for them to be able to sustain the type of physicalness that you have to play, uh, you know, maybe not as long as in the past because we have more rotation of players that can come in and help their teammates and, and continue to play at a higher level. So hopefully we don't wear down as much as we mm -hmm. did last year. And having some veterans now on the team yeah. learned a lot from last year and a lot mm -hmm. of close games last year. <laughs> and, and what's the theme? Uh, yeah, the team well, you product? know, I mean, it, a little bit was expected. I think we, at some point, we were the sixth youngest team in the country mm -hmm. uh, last year in Division One, and um, and they were really learning every day. They were getting better and better and and all. But there were times, and actually, there were 17 games last year. Within five minutes, it was a five-point game uh -huh. either way. That either we won or lost. And, and a lot of that is some of that's coaching, no doubt about it. And, and some of that's just not having the experience to close it out. So the theme this year, and, and it's something the team picked last spring at the very end of the basketball season, is finish. Mm -hmm. They want to finish games, and uh, you know they realize how close they were in too many of them, and they felt like maybe we just gave them away a little right. bit. So uh, finish is, is definitely the theme, and it's something that we remind ourselves of every day in practice. And is that part of growing? As a Certainly. program, developing program, just part yeah, of the building process? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think it is. And, um, you know, you, you, this year we're walking out, of here, out here with six players who have not played Division I basketball mm -hmm. that have to learn and, and continue to develop. Right now they're learning the system, they're learning their teammates, they're learning what their coaches are like, and that's great. But until they actually get out here in an actual game and really understand how, how quickly things uh, go both offensively and def defensively, how physical things are, how quick the decision making has to be to perform it at a really high level, um, it takes time. And that's where the veterans can come mm -hmm. in on the court. Yep. Not only you coaching them, but the veterans coach them as well. Yeah, you know, and, and I've seen that in practice. That's part of that accountability mm -hmm. that we spoke about at the beginning, but um, the upperclassmen really understand what it takes. And I, I hear them on the sidelines every day in practice saying things like, hey, this is what gets us ready for the pressure of ASU. This is mm -hmm. what gets us ready for the size of a Stanford team who, who's the biggest team in the country. We have to be able to do these things right. So they're always reminding their peers of what's coming and what's going on. And well, that, that is just so valuable as a coaching staff because I know it, as a player, right. um, sometimes I didn't <laughs> always believe the coach, but I certainly believe my teammates. So that, that type of leadership um, and that experience that those upperclassmen bring is just so valuable. So what style of play can fans expect when they come here to Beasley and, and watch the team? Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you, it's <laughs> going to, you know, I, I know that we've been exciting. You know, right. it's definitely been exciting uh, our first three years here. But I, I think that what we're going to see is a continued more excitement about what we're doing both offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to see a better balance of an inside-out game. Our, our front line has improved enormously. We, we've, we've added some pieces in, in that play. And, um, you know, every practice we talk about we are going to tap the basket from the inside out. If our posts have a good move, we expect them to go and finish. If they get double teamed, then we expect them to kick it out and find our spot up guard. So more balance than mm -hmm. what we've seen before. Better play, more consistent play from the front line. Is it part of a kind of a pressure and the versatility that you have 
with the post players and the guards and versatility and what you can do? Well, it is. I, I think that, you know, again, having the depth that we have and the talent that we have, we've been, we've been a, a very heavily, heavy guard loaded team in mm -hmm. our first three years here. And, and, and hats off to the guards. They've really improved a lot. And our front line has, has been emerging slowly but surely. But this year, I think, especially in the off season that they had, um, they've all taken a huge step. You know, part of playing in the pivot, and, and especially in the Pac-10 and the schedule that we're going to play preseason, is it's so physical, and you really have to establish your presence down there mm -hmm. on both ends. And um, you know, we have a great strength coach and, and coach David Lang, and he's put a lot of great size on these kids. But good size, in fact, they're a lot quicker, even though they may be way more and certainly a lot stronger. So I, I think part of part of our development wasn't just the skills sets in the paint, but also being able to get a lot stronger uh, to hold our own inside. And you mentioned strength coach David Lang yeah. renovated the weight room this summer. Oh. You talk about facilities here. Yeah. We're here at Beasley, one of the finest yeah. coliseums in the Pac-10. Yep. Renovate a weight room, that must have been a great plus. Oh my goodness. Season. I mean, you know, with our new athletic director with Bill Moose, um, you know, he knows all about facilities. Everywhere mm -hmm. he's been, whether it was at Montana or University of Oregon, great facilities, both places. And, um, you know, he is all about getting it done. He understands that, you know, what we're up against in recruiting nationally and in our Pac-10 uh -huh. conference. And so we, we have to get after it and, and we have to improve it. First thing he did was new field turf for the football program, uh, for the practice field. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. I think it all happened in three days. Yeah. I went away <laughs> for a couple days, came back brand new, and I know the football team was so excited about that and the next thing you walk inside the building and you go in that weight room and it's a wow factor it is mm -hmm. certainly wow factor uh, the coaching staff there did a did a great job of identifying the new things that we need to really have the edge in the strength and conditioning realm and everything is in that weight room now so uh, really proud about that and I, I know that the recruits that we've had on campus mm -hmm. have really taken notice of it I mean by far they've said by far this is the best weight room in the Pac-10 that they have seen and I know when our players came back uh -huh. for the summer, they were pretty excited about it too. And talk about facilities, a weight room. Mm -hmm. You practice here. Mm -hmm. You also practice in the practice yes. facility at the Boer Athletic Complex. Yep. And all this is right in the heart of campus. Yep. So when students come here to watch a game, they don't have to drive here, they can walk here. You know, one of the things we talk about in recruiting, you know, about being a student athlete here, is we want you to be a gym rat. We mm -hmm. want you in the gym working on your game. We want players who want to be great. And to be great, you, you have to take it very serious and you have to schedule out time every day to get in here and find a way to improve your game. I, I have a tremendous staff, a veteran staff, who I think is the best in the Pac-10 about developing talent. And uh -huh. we've had kids go on and play professionally, WNBA, USA Basketball, play for other countries internationally. And I think a lot of it is because of the fact that we don't just take a player and say, okay, you're playing one position and you've got to get good at that. We try to expand their horizon, so to speak, as players and really challenge them to become versatile both inside and out. Well, as we said, a month from now, this place will be rocking with fans and the schedule will be going. And you mentioned the schedule, yeah. your non-conference, Pac-10 <laughs> schedule is tough enough, but yeah. your non-conference schedule, you have 10 teams who yeah. made the postseason last year. Most notably, Nebraska will be coming here sure. on November 22nd. They yeah. were a number one seed in the yeah. NCAAs last year. Talk about your schedule, especially non-conference, how you want to use that to prepare for the Pac-10. Well, you know, we weren't shy about <laughs> scheduling. Maybe we're a little crazy. No, we weren't shy about it, but you know, our philosophy as a coaching staff, wherever I've been, has played the best to be the best. And, you know, the Pac-10 is the best. Yes. And to get ready for the Pac-10, soon to be the Pac-12, right. uh, we really uh, put a, a very big challenge in front of this team by playing, as you said, 10 teams that were in postseason last year. And a very, very unique situation. Not only, you know, you talked about Nebraska being the Big 12 champions and a number one seed going into the NCAAs last year, but every team uh, in that preseason schedule brings a whole different style of play. Talked about a couple of things in the news recently. Uh, earlier this week, the Pac-10 coach Coaches poll came out, yep. no surprise, Stanford number one, mm -hmm. and the Cougars were picked uh, tied for eighth with mm -hmm. Washington. Uh, your thoughts yeah. on the poll? Well, yeah, it's a lot of things going on, you mm -hmm. know, with, uh, with all the great things that, with the new Pac-12 conference and Larry Scott, our commissioner, uh -huh. man, you talk about aggressive and getting after it. This guy is doing wonderful things, and, and I know that our athletic director, Bill Moose, has just been, you know, arm in arm with him mm -hmm. in, in the room, you know, trying to really better the conference, and, and they certainly are, are doing that. Um, the coaches poll is always interesting, you know, we, we don't get to vote for ourselves. <laughs> I, I guess that's probably a good thing because every coach would probably right. vote themselves number one. I don't know, but Stanford, by 
all right should be up there with the, what would be a nine first place votes mm -hmm. uh, because Tara couldn't vote for herself. <laughs> but uh, and I'm not so sure they're not preseason number one right. in the country or right there with, with UConn. Uh, you know, until somebody knocks them off, I guess two years undefeated. Right. You know, they're going to be up there. I, I can tell you this: uh, the last time that the coaches pool in the Pac-10 picked us in this position. Uh, we end up winning the Pac-10, and we end up being at the regional in Spokane and going all the way to the Elite Eight. I believe in karma. Talk about the importance of having the fans here, students, yeah. uh, the community, uh, people from Spokane, just being here, Pack yeah. and Beasley, and, and the advantage that brings for your team. Yeah, it's so important. You know, uh, whether you, they talk about the six man, I guess, or six woman, uh -huh. or whatever it is, but you know, our fan support, our fan base has continued to grow every year, and we really appreciate that. Our students on the WSU campus, the Zoo Crew, all of them, as crazy and fun as you guys are, you know, there are the most prevalent group of student support groups of all the Pac-10 teams. Every coach that comes in here says, you know, coach, how do you get the students out the way you do? And, and that, you know, that, that's what being a Cougs all about, supporting each other, being a, in a small community where we really know each other and we know how hard these kids are working and we want to support them. So that, that's great. But, you know, we've seen an influx of people coming from the Garfields, Moscow, uh, Spokane area you spoke about, and we really appreciate that. The product this year will be better than it's been in, in the last four years of our, of our us being able to coach here at Washington State and we're going to be very exciting but we we need you we need you in the sands we need you to be loud and proud and I think you're going to be really excited about what you're going to see. June thanks for taking the time to join us look forward to a great season. I am too thanks so much go Cougs. Go Cougs.